welcome back to another episode of the Paranormal Journals right here on Black Mass Paranormal. So I know I've been away for a couple of weeks. I've been doing some investigating. I finally finished up going through um, all of the footage, preparing it for this family that I had talked about. Um, I guess it was about a month ago now. Um, been working really hard on that, uh, getting a lot of stuff prepared for my upcoming trips. Um, I've gotten one under my belt already, and I have my big one coming up, and I'm super excited about it. It's going to be kind of next level. It's, it's like a multi-day thing where I'm going to be basically just living out in the woods uh, for a about four or five days so it's uh it's gonna be awesome it's taken a lot of time to prepare for it and y'all I'm, I'm sorry i haven't been as active as i usually am um you know after that last uh investigation where um some assholes started shooting at me um it was a little bit difficult <laughs> to uh you know uh work my nerve up to uh you know get back out in the woods and you know but it's cool. I'm over it. Um, it, it happens. It comes with the territory and you know, it is what it is, but, um, I have been working on multiple, uh, stories for the, uh, paranormal journals, um, getting all the details and everything, uh, get everything put together. I've got a couple of them that are really cool. Um, I've got one coming from my friend Donald, um, his is like registered, um, and everything. And it's, it, it's a, it's a really cool story. So with that being said, um, I've also got some stuff from my friend Connie. I'm going to show you all as well. And so moving forward, um, my buddy Terry, uh, he emailed me and, was wanting to share a story that he had that happened to him in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Now, I've covered the Great Smoky National Park a bunch. Um, it's, you know, one of my favorite places to be in the world. There, There's so much there. It's amazing. Um, it just it deepens the, the cryptid tie to the Appalachians. Now, this story here... I wanted to bring to you all because I think it's extremely important in understanding the kind of, in my opinion, the evolution of a feral person living in the Appalachian Mountains. Now, I don't think it, it, pretty much anybody, if you're from East Tennessee or Appalachia in general, um, you, you're going to recognize the fact that, yes, there are people living off the grid in the Appalachians. Now, the question is, is, are those people still people or have those people transitioned back to our genetic beginning? So, that sounded kind of weird to say, but... That's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, with that being said, me personally, I feel that there are multi-generations of feral people living in and through Appalachia that have never experienced uh, civilized society at all. I, I, I believe that they have been out there from the beginning that, you know, nothing is going to change that. However... My friend Terry um, messaged me about an incident that occurred uh, with him and his wife in Cades Cove. So in Cades Cove, there are uh, several access points. There's hiking trails. There's um, it, it essentially goes into this one big loop. Um, however, on that loop, there's different, you know, places where you can go to a church, um, where you can go see old cabins that it kind of branches off in all directions. And one of those directions is an area that is called 
Rowan's Creek. Now, I've been to Rowan's Creek multiple times. Um, it's very interesting. There, it, just the landscape there is, is very unique. Now, what's important to note is that in Kate's Cove, there are existing cabins that are already there that are, you know, from a long time ago from early homesteaders. Cade's Cove itself has its own water source. It has a massive amount of wildlife. There are black bears there. There are elk, deer, um, rabbits, squirrels, on and on and on. So there is a ton of food. There is also a lot of wild edible plants that grow in Cade's Cove. Now, on my adventures, that is one thing that I always try to determine when I am hunting for a cryptid or hunting basically anything is, does this land have the, um, the resources to support life? So as Terry and his wife uh, were heading through Cades Cove. This occurred at towards the end of January. So it was still pretty cold outside. Terry said that there was still frost on the ground. However, he did say that it was a bright and sunny day. So in the Smoky Mountains, a lot of times when you uh, get, get out early in the morning, um, there is a lot of fog. Now the Smoky Mountains actually get their name because of the fog that comes off of the mountains. Terry, um, as they were driving, Terry had just showed his wife where um, he had wanted to have his ashes spread um, when he passed away. I thought that was a pretty cool statement for him to share with me. So, um, I, Terry, I can't blame you. Kate's Cove is amazing. Um, but the, he was visiting uh, an, another cemetery over there. Well, while they were... Um, Near Rowan's Creek, uh, Terry said that he reached in the back seat and was looking out of his back window. Um, and he, w he was trying to get something out of his, his wife's purse or, or something like that. I can't remember right offhand. But he was looking out the back window of his car when he looks up and he sees a shirtless man now he said that he could not see this individual from the waist down all he saw was from the waist up terry described this person as being extremely thin really emaciated terry said that he could actually see all of his ribs on his side he also said that the guy looked like he had never had a haircut Never in his life. He said that he had the full scraggly just beard that he was filthy. He said he, he emphasized that the man was extremely filthy. Terry then noticed, notices something that I think is absolutely critical in understanding what is going on with the feral people. He said that the man also has a stick in his hand. He said the stick was about uh, chest high, you know, it, that he was using to brace himself and travel um, through the brush. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because this shows us that this person being in this area, now, granted, he could just be passing through, okay? That's that's a possibility. So I, I, I'm not ruling that out. However, the Cades Cove area has already sustained food source and shelter where somebody who was either running from the law or just wanted to completely get off the grid could very well survive. Now, with it being winter months, it would be a lot more difficult because the majority of the animals are not going to be 
too active. So it's going to show them being emaciated. These people are going to be struggling getting through the winter. Now, I found this case to be absolutely fascinating because here we have Cades Cove. You know, if you talk if you talk about the Smoky Mountains, you talk about Cades Cove. It's an area that is extremely popular with tourists. Um, basically, if you say that you're going to go to East Tennessee, uh, one of the main places that you are going to have to go to is Cades Cove. So there are a lot of people there in general. Um, the rangers are also very active through Cades Cove because we have, unfortunately, a, a lot of people that cannot understand that our animals are dangerous and they will kill you. And that, yes, that black bear cub is cute and it looks so cuddly, but mama bear is about 30 feet away and she will rip your face off. But for some reason, we still have people go up and they try to get close to these bears and these animals. And like almost every year, I read about a story about some asshole who just decides that they need to take a up close and personal picture of a, a, a black bear cub and then mom comes and fucks their day up. So there is a lot of activity here. Um, you know, we have tourists, rangers, um, but the woods there are very dense. There is definitely, if a, Per, if a feral person was living in Appalachia, I could almost guarantee you that they would have some sort of interaction with Cades Cove at some point in their life. Because this area, I mean, it, it was a homesteading point. It, you know, that's where, you know, uh, East Tennessee really grew from. Um so all of that stuff is still there. So if you are trying to get through a tough winter and you come out of the forest and you see this area, obviously the people you're going to try to avoid. However, um, this gives you a fantastic opportunity to get shelter, to kind of, you know, get yourself together. I absolutely love this story because there is one so much history with Cades Cove um in my opinion uh I'm surprised I have not had more stories like this come to me um because of its location I mean Cades Cove is absolutely beautiful um and it's definitely a place to check out um, however, there is a lot of animals in the area and with animals, you know, I mean, I wouldn't see why a person on the, the, for lack of a better word, their evolution to either become feral or return to civilization from being feral, um, would not pass uh, through this area at some point. Um, so what Terry experienced, in my opinion, was either a person that was um, on one of those two mediums. You know, he's either on his way to becoming feral, where he had lived in civilization before, maybe he gotten financial trouble, maybe he got in legal trouble, whatever the reason may be, and he decided that he was going to live off grid, then possibly maybe he got himself in trouble, and, you know, he knew that Cade's Cove was basically, like, on the edge of civilization, so it would be a great place for him to be able to gather supplies, find a cabin, and, you know, 
try to make it through the winter or this person this feral person was either coming the other direction so had spent his entire life you know living in the appalachians and not encountering civilization and now he's on his way um back to civilization so i think that walking stick was, was kind of important um because it shows you know using tools um of course in a lot of these feral people encounters um they've talked about people have talked about finding traps and things like that so um as terry after terry saw this individual he didn't want to freak his wife out because um his, his wife was already afraid of the bears in the area which you know rightfully so i mean there we got some we got some big bears um as he was walking up to the uh tipton cabin which is a really cool cabin i've actually uh, investigated uh that cabin i got some really cool voices but anyway um as he was walking up towards the cabin he noticed um a perfect human footprint you know in east tennessee in towards the end of january the coldest month um you know where somebody is not most likely not going to be barefooted uh walking around uh kate's cove in the, during this time terry said he tried to prevent his wife from seeing it and freaking out so he, he said he put his his boot over it which i totally understand um you know uh, that's just kind of part of the territory when you go out in the woods uh you know <laughs> you got to keep people from getting freaked out while you're there so um you know this the video that i'm going to be releasing very soon um i'm buttoning up some details on it that is going to be very beneficial to the channel and i want you all to keep in mind when you all are watching the uh, possum valley haunting video um this is a family um these are real people uh they you know are experiencing um a haunting and it's really difficult for you know the average person who's not into the paranormal to really kind of understand what is happening um i wanted to try to share this uh haunting with you all as well that way you will have a good understanding of you know how these hauntings kind of really um Occur and how they can really affect um, families and, you know, try to find a solution um, so that, you know, the family can continue living their lives without having to leave their home. Um, so, um, thank you all so much for the continued support thank you for all the comments i apologize for being behind on them if you're new to the channel give this video a like definitely turn on notifications that way you know if i'm out running my mouth doing something stupid um you'll hear about it and uh if you're new to the channel you know do me a favor and subscribe if you want if not just come back and check me out um i'm usually doing some interesting stuff i definitely have a lot of cool stuff that is going to be headed your all's way very, very soon. And I am so sorry I'm running behind, but it is what it is. Um, Till next time.